Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a defrost control board. All right, this is found in the outside unit. All right, it's in the outdoor heat pump unit, and it controls defrost. All right, so if the temperature ends up being too low uh, and the coils start to frost, then you end up having this control board handling that issue. So what you have here, I'm just going to go over everything and you have the O comes in as the power to the reversing valve that comes in from the indoor unit. Then this, the R wire, uh, the R terminal, that comes in as 24 volt power. It's consistent 24 volt power to this control board. And then you have C where it comes back out of the control board, powering this load and going back to the indoor unit. All right, so R is where it comes in, C is where it comes out, C is the common. All right, why? All right, that actually handles the compressor. In the case of just air conditioning only, why would mean air conditioning, but in this case, since it's a heat pump, why means compressor. All right, now W2 is the only wire that is an output. W2 is an output from here, letting the indoor unit know that this is in defrost right now and that you would be powering the auxiliary heat. So that goes to, say, the W terminal on the furnace or the electric heat strips uh, on an air handler. All right, so the next thing you have is T2. T2 and common, T2 goes and powers the contactor. All right, so it comes in here, and then it exits on this side. And when it exits, it comes back through the C. So this is powering the heat pump to the on position. Then down here you have the O, that powers the reversing valve, and C is where it comes back. So it goes from O here out to the reversing valve and back through the C terminal. That powers the reversing valve. And for the most part, um, most heat pumps are going to power the reversing valve in cooling only and not in heat. Uh, Root and Ream are the only ones that power the reversing valve in, in heat. All right, so it's basically one of those things where they figure if it's going to fail, let it fail in heat mode, in the non-powered state. All right, that's more important than air conditioning. All right, so you have, then you have T1 and Y. Going basically between those two terminals there is pressure switches and temperature sensors on the heat pump. So you have a low, low pressure, a high pressure, and then a high temperature. All right, the high temperature will be found on the discharge line right out of the compressor. But if any of those are broken, it's not going to end up turning the compressor on. It's actually going to shut it off. All right. Then you have OF2, and that powers the outdoor fan motor. So off of this relay here, the control board is powering the relay. It'll turn the outdoor fan motor off when it's in defrost because basically what's happening in defrost is you have the whole outdoor unit in air conditioning mode at that point. In an air conditioning mode, if you think about that, the fins are getting very hot. That's where it's rejecting the heat to the outside air. So typically, basically what, what's happening is in the middle of summer, you know, those, the coil actually has to be a lot hotter than the outdoor air in order to reject the heat from the refrigerant. So that's how it ends up melting the coil. It ends up just heating the outdoor fins up and melting the frost off the uh, fins. During that time, it shuts off the outdoor fan motor so that the coils just get really, really hot. All right. You have power coming from the contactor going through a vapor pressure switch and coming back to OF1. That is normally closed, and that pressure switch is closed in air conditioning and in heat mode as well as in defrost mode okay now down here what we have is we have our our defrost settings you have this is a timer so you have 30 minutes 60 minutes 90 minutes or 120 minutes depending on how you set these dip switches typically the manufacturer is going to set the 90 minutes as the default but you can set it at 60, you can set it at 120, you know, whatever works for you. Coming off of the DFT, you have a defrost temperature sensor. 
and that is normally open. All right. So uh, what you have is you have this is open. All right. And this needs to meet the time requirement. So this is a cumulative time requirement. So if the unit shuts off, turns back on, shuts off again and turns back on. All right. It's basically counting down the all of those, you know, whatever the time is, say 60 minutes. It's counting up to 60 minutes. And when it gets to 60 minutes, if this DFT is closed, it's going to enter defrost mode. So during defrost mode, the reversing valve changes and it becomes powered into cooling mode and the outdoor fan motor shuts off. W2 here sends a signal back to the furnace or the air handler telling it to turn on the electric strip heating. And that's making sure that the homeowner isn't getting cold air blown on them. All right, so that is uh, heating the house still on the auxiliary heat. So you have to have both of these. You have to have met the time requirement, and you have to have the DFT closed. All right, and then this is the speed up. The speed up is basically you're closing this with a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, maybe bigger than this. What I typically do is I close the contacts in the DFT to trick it out. So I would just take the alligator clips all right, and close it like that. And the other side, I would make sure that it's not touching any metal anywhere. Now that that's done, what I would do is I would just, I would just take a screwdriver and touch these together. So if you have it set for say 90 minutes, it would take about 21 seconds of you with the screwdriver holding the speed up terminals. Or you could just use another set of alligator clips on the speed up terminal. And then when you hear the reversing valve turn on, then you let go of the speed up terminal. All right, and then you enter defrost where you can check your pressures and temperatures. After that, after you're all done, then what you do to finish up the defrost is you are then reopening the DFT terminals. Now that DFT, what's happening is um, the defrost will end when the DFT temperature sensor opens uh, at about 65 degrees, 65 to 70 degrees. Once it sees that, it knows that the coil is all melted off. All right. So that, that DFT sensor is actually on the outdoor fins. And once it gets to 65, 70 degrees, it will uh, it will open back up again. That will end defrost. Now, defrost will actually if this if this time requirement and that's just for any any time requirement of the heat pump running, it's going to start counting up the minutes. Doesn't matter what temperature it is, it's going to start counting up the minutes in a cumulative fashion. Once it gets to the upper limit of say 90 minutes, if this DFT is closed, it will start defrost. The DFT could be closed even if it's 40 degrees outside because you got to remember that the outdoor fins have to be colder than the outdoor air in order for it to, to absorb any heat from the outdoor air. So the if it's 40 degrees outside, the quills are certainly below freezing, and that will end up closing the DFT terminals. All right, but that's how that works. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Super Stack Channel.